the components that is needed to make this uh, electric skateboard. The first thing you need is a scooter hub mode fuse for four to five bucks. Uh, you will need uh, angle iron brackets for the mount, for the wheel. Um, this is a uh, ECS uh, for the throttle and the controller um, and a um, receiver uh, remote uh, for um, forward and reverse and brake. And also uh, you would need a battery pack. This is um, Hubbacraft um, 36 volt, two of them to give me extra distance. And these will be arranged in parallel. So two of these in parallel will give me um, eight point, uh, left a little over eight amps, hours. Um, and then you would need a lithium charger, 36 volt charger for the battery. Some screws and bolts and washer and a pigtail um, and a pigtail harness that connects um, these batteries in, in parallel. That's all you need. So the first thing you want to do is select a um, longboard um, that um, that you want to convert into electric skateboard. Um, so instead of uh, having a traditional um, hub motor on a uh, skateboard wheels or some belt driven um, motor, and so I opted using a um, scooter hub motor wheel um, that goes in the center. And the hub wheel looks something like this, which I cut a hole to fit the wheel and it looks something like um, like this. So it's important to um, select a area um, from the skateboard that you want to cut this hole in the middle. Um, you don't want it too far where your foot, the front foot would be or too, too far in the back where your rear foot would be. Um, so this is slightly, as you can see, um, off center towards the rear um, of the uh, skateboard. And you want to cut in, uh, a big enough hole uh, to accommodate the wheel. So you, what I did is I measured the width of the wheel and added an extra half an inch. So that's, or extra inch, so there's a half inch. Um, space in the rear, the half inch in the um, front. Same thing with the um, the sides. I cut roughly about an inch extra, maybe three quarter inch uh, total. So there's room. And then the um, the little slot there I added extra because this this wheel towards the um, towards the uh, axle bulges out a little bit, so I need that clearance. So the most important part of this, and the most difficult part of this installation is um, installing this wheel. Um, so when you install this, this, the wheel has to be pretty much flush um, to the ground with, um, with the wheel, the skateboard wheel also being flush to the ground. You don't want um, the uh, you don't want the skateboard too high where it goes something like that. It's not it's not level, and that'd be a very unstable ride. For the uh, wheel mounting bracket, I use um, I think this is one eighth um, aluminum angle iron that I got from Lowe's and cut it to length, maybe um, five inches long. And I drilled a hole and cut it such that the um, axle goes through it. On this side here, I put a slit in it so that the uh, wire from the uh, hub motor will um, go in and out. And then I drilled a couple holes where I then mount it to the skateboard. So now I'm gonna install the 
the brackets for the motor and Look something like that. And I feel something like that. Before you drill the holes, you want to make sure that um, this is flush with the uh, with the wheel here, and um, you want to ensure that it's um, center. Um, you know, to give the clearance, and also it's not, you know, cocked off side, off center um, before you drill the hole. So it's probably best to uh, just drill one hole here, one here, and put a screw in there, um, and then it, well, at least do one first, and then and then you can adjust it by swinging it back and forth until you know it's straight. So this is pretty much the center of the board and it has clearance, it's not rubbing. And then you drill your holes and then you put your bolts and nuts uh, to secure it. So I'm using the stainless steel screw and bolts to secure this. But you wanna make sure that the bolt is uh, tapered so that it's flush on the underside or the top part of the board. One important, um, one thing to note is that the uh, connector on this is not going to work. Basically, I cut it and then um, use any type of connector that you have uh, to connect these three uh, phase wire from the motor. And then there's also um, five wires for the hall sensor and I use a, I think it's JST connector um, to um, to attach to um, which will attach to uh, this the uh, e ESC all right once you get all the eight bolts uh, and nuts in uh, you want to tighten these okay once you have the wheel installed Next thing you want to do is build a box for the battery. <clears throat> so what I did here is I use um, ABS plastic. This is a uh, one tenth of an inch thick. It's pretty thick. So this box is very, very, very sturdy. And essentially, this, this comes in. And I purchased it. It's um, it's a sheet. Pretty much is one foot by one foot sheet and I cut it like a cross and then stick it in an oven and melt it uh, over a box that I uh, fabricated using the cell and then place the uh, hot um, sheet over that box to form a nice uh, fit and once it's uh, dry once it's cool, I then um, put an extra flare on this where I can use for, for bolting into the uh, skateboard. And for this one, um, since the battery is pretty, pretty heavy, um, instead of having a, 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 a bolt and washer or a bolt and nut, I uh, decided to use this uh, inset um, screws that I screwed into the um, to the deck and then using um, a bolt secure it uh, to the um, battery box
do the same thing for the other side. Get it secure to the deck on both sides. And we have the wiring harness um, coming out. I made, um, I offset it. Actually it's not offset, but one is shorter than the other because one battery is back here and then other batteries here. So one's gonna be longer than the other. Uh, so now we need to um, make a wiring harness that uh, connect these two batteries in parallel. And so I did that. And these are XT60 connectors and I made using the same length and that connects to, that, that terminates to one end um, and that connects to the uh, ECS. Now the next part is um, mounting this uh, ECS um, back here. So what I did was I built a, um, a small little plastic this is not really sturdy, but it doesn't need to be because it's pretty low foil profile uh, box for, for the ECS. And what I did was I actually use, um, this is a, um, this is a small size for, for, I think it's like four inch um, paint roller, plastic disposable thing that you can get from a dollar store. And I cut the, um, cut the bottom of it out to form this um, perfect compartment for the ECS controller. And that fits nicely in here. And um, for the battery uh, gauge, I cut a little slot and um, glued it to it. And also the um, power button for the ECS as well. Um, and made some holes here for the antenna and the uh, b battery cable, no, actually not battery cable, but the, um, the cable for the, um, for the motor and the um, hall controller, or the hall sensor. Point out that this ECS is actually a dual motor control. Um, this is the um, power, and this is uh, for the hall sensor for the first motor, and this hall sensor for the second motor. But since I'm only using one motor, I'm only using this side and um, and this uh, three-phase motor wire here. This is the power. And this is the other for the other motor, which is not being used. So I'm gonna connect these and um, see if it works. This right here is the um, battery. Um, meter goes here it's going to range something like this so to hook up this three phase uh, wire for the motor there's three colors three wires green blue and yellow and essentially that mat matches to um, to to these um, wires here so what I did was I uh, I'm sorry, it matches up to these wires here. Um, the colors on this might be a little different, but um, they're, they're thicker ones. This one's blue, brown, and yellow. Okay, so the um, brown here will correlate to the green here. And then blue is the blue, and yellow is the yellow. Um, <clears throat> and that connects. So I basically, essentially, built a special connector terminal. So what I did was I um, put these together into this wiring harness that um, would work and connect these um, these uh, banana clips. If I had banana clips on this, it'd be easier to actually connect um, banana clip together like this and I wouldn't use this wiring harness, but since I didn't have the um, banana clips, I'll just use this um, connector here. And um, plug that in, and then um, plug up the uh, hall sensor to to this one here. Okay. And then put some cushion like that in there to keep it from bouncing. And then see so battery. 
wires here. No slot here for the wires. And this is the antenna, which mounts back here. So here, put some um, cushion here to keep it from vibrating. Um, the battery exits here. The wiring for the motor exits there. And this is for the antenna, which um, will mount up here. to charge lithium batteries at 36 volts charger. It's equipped with a 5.5 um, millimeter um, DC adapter. And what I did was I built a um, converter for this using a female adapter to XT60. Uh, and that way you can charge the um, battery pack. To the battery, um, the battery's charging and it goes from green to red. And when it's complete, it turns to green. And that's it, that's how you charge these two battery packs.